When he was here his second day, he came to me and he said, Dad, he said, I want to do my exercise. I want to run, but I, I don't know how far to run. And I said, well, how far do you want to go? And he said, 30 kilometers. And I said, I have no idea what 30 kilometers is. I said, my friend is the cross country coach. I said, let me call him up. Call up Jim Koch, he's the cross country coach for uh, Tully. I said, Jim, I said, this kid wants to run. I said, how far is 30 kilometers? He said, I'll be right down. He said, that's 18 miles. So I told Lopez to run to the dam and back, which is 14 miles. So you go all the way down, and when the lake ends, there's a big wall. Turn around and come back. So he took off, and Jim met him at his driveway as he was returning. Lopez had already run 13 miles. Jim thought he'd run with him back to our house. He couldn't keep up with him. This is a cross-country coach that runs almost every day. So we knew that he was a pretty darn good runner. We met Lopez at the airport, and it was July 31st, 2001, and we had a big sign saying welcome. We headed on out to the car, and he was surprised that we had a car. He couldn't believe we had a car. Got in the car, and then... Uh, went to McDonald's. Yes. We went to McDonald's. He told me later that he thought we took him to a really fancy restaurant to celebrate, because in Africa, being pretty poor, he wouldn't have been allowed inside a restaurant. So he was amazed by it, and. Then we got on the highway. All the boys in the come have always been impressed by Route 81 coming from the airport. This is a very good road. <laughs> Africa, the road. We do not little... see roads like this. <laughs> this is a very good road. His first meet with the team, they had a golf cart leading the race. That keeps the kids all on track. Well, he didn't really understand the concept of racing, so he thought the point of the race was to beat the golf cart. So he was sprinting out and passing the golf cart. So the guy in the golf cart would go cut the course and get in front of him again. Well, he passed the golf cart two or three times. Finally, he was dying. And there was two more experienced runners that passed him at the finish line. He was a little upset that he lost the race because he was third. And of course, when he ran, he was representing us, the family. And I mean, he, he, put, the, he put the burden on heavy. And so the next race is the Syracuse Invitational at Lemoyne College. And the coach says, I'm going to tell you how to run this race. So he says, you see this mark on the uphill here? He says, this is two miles. But up until that point, I want you to settle in with the front guys in the pack and just run off of their pace for two miles. After that, if you still feel good, go ahead and go. So there he is, carrying on a conversation, talking to all the other runners in the front with 400 kids on their heels. And I'm standing on the hill up at the two mile mark. And he says, oh, hey. That's my mark, I've gotta go. And he did. <laughs> and I don't think he ever lost another cross country race. Well, he was saying yes to everything. I said, well, you know how to use the toilet and you know how to use the shower. And so we thought he did. Turns out he was taking a shower, it was freezing cold, which I guess he thought, you know, he'd never had hot water before, why would it be hot here? And then the next day he gets in and the shower is so hot that he's like jumping in and out, putting soap on and jumping. So I guess on the third day he realized that he actually had control over what it was doing. And all of this came as a revelation six months later. He's comfortable with me, we're, you know, we're a family now. We're laughing about some of these things he did. And I said, I kept asking you, do you know how to do this? Do you know how this? And you said yes to everything. I said, why didn't you tell me you didn't know? I said, I just wanted to teach you. And he said, I knew I did not belong in this house with you people. So I thought they'd be coming to get me, and I didn't want to cause any problems. He assumed that he would be in, in like maybe a servant's quarters or an outbuilding or something, and he just thought that we didn't understand the rules. He came from the lowest rung in a third world nation, and what he had seen in the world, this broke every rule. I said, why don't you call your friends back there? You know, he talked to his friends here, but he didn't talk to his friends in Africa. I said, don't you want to tell them about your life here? And he said, they could not believe me. He said they would, they would think I was making it up. They would think I was lying. They just have no frame to realize how every single American lives. He's made us see our world a little different, I would say.